if this trust and quasi quasi were Labour politicians, we would have had an election already. They would be dead in the water. They would not be able to. So it's only because the tabloids support the Tories and are either they're just playing a flat. I mean, yeah, they've been critical and that you can tell them, you know, they're frustrated. They're like, oh my God, you know, we've got to support you. For heaven's sake, Keir Starmer will become the first Prime Minister to be elected in this country without the endorsement of any tabloid. I'm pretty sure about that. So therefore, he will be free of them. And that is a good thing for democracy. David Yellings, hello. How are you? Hi. Hi. Good. Um, David, you're a former editor of The Sun newspaper. You've had a storied journalism career experience, which we'll draw on later, but you're now a communications expert. So from that perspective, how do you think Liz Truss is getting on? Terribly, uh, I think is the answer. Um, I, I've rarely seen a communication. I mean, if you, if you take this, you know, you can look at the politics of it and you can look at the communications of it. It's really interesting that this morning, my old paper, The Sun, ran an editorial attacking the communications in Downing Street, uh, uh, the quality of, of what they call the spin, uh, which is very rare. So even they, uh, and who would be a natural supporter of the Conservative Party, obviously, can see that the cons have been awful. Um, but the policy has been awful as well. But you know, we can talk about that, obviously. We'll get, we'll get to the policy side of things. Um, I mean, from your professional background, what advice would you give her in her current situation? Oh, I think she's probably beyond that advice. I mean, you know, um, I would not seek to give her advice because um, I think that the proposition is unsellable. You know, I mean, she as a proposition is not sellable. I mean, it, this is not going to work. It's a, it's a total car crash. Um, and I'm afraid, you know, I don't know. I don't see how it ends. I mean, I think it ends in an election sooner or later. Yeah, the your 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 old paper, the Sun, the Telegraph, and then also all sorts of government ministers on the airwaves over the last yeah. few days have been saying that yeah. Liz Truss's problem is comms, and that if Number Ten had, I think the quote they're using is better prepared the ground for her budget. Yeah, she wouldn't be in her current position. But I'm sensing that what you're saying is. That's not actually really the problem. It's a broader problem no, with. No. Uh, do you no Liz, Truss doesn't, Liz Truss's fundamental problem is not that she doesn't know how to communicate or that her communications is bad. Liz Truss's fundamental problem is Liz Truss, right? She, she is not a sellable proposition. She is not up to the job. And the policy uh, agenda is just not going to work. Um, and you know, to blame comms is is is. I mean, her communications is is terrible. The decision to put her across all the BBC regional um, uh, output the other day was basically equivalent to creating a sort of circular firing squad for her instead of just putting her on the Today program. But if they put her on the Today program, she'd have been shot anyway just by one bullet, not sort of fifteen, sixteen. So. Um, yeah, the comms is the comms is amateur actually. It is absolutely abysmal, but that's not the main issue. Well, there's there's two things I want to say about that. The first is about the local radio presenters. Strategically, it just seems so insane to me. For, for, you know, for those journalists, you're basically giving eight different people the opportunity of a lifetime. Yeah. Every single one of them yeah. is acutely aware that this is their moment. This is this is the one and only time they're going to get to interview the prime minister, and they're going to be gunning for her. It just, yeah, yeah. It's, it seemed um, extraordinary. It was, yeah. And it was the like other game of Russian, ru Russian roulette. They only needed one bullet to work. Yeah, completely. And then the other thing I was going to say um, more broadly is, I guess, about the politics of the situation is, do you think the reason why we've ended up with an individual like Liz Truss as prime minister is, you know, particularly during B Boris Johnson's time as prime minister, I think it was quite acute, the sort of culling of members of his party, you know, quite talented Tory politicians, politicians I don't, you know, necessarily politically agree with, but nonetheless, you would have to say yeah, yeah. intellectual, well across their briefs, etc. Yeah. They were cast out of the party. And do you think to an extent now, Liz Truss is kind of a product of the of those politics, of the Johnson politics, that we've we've run out of talented politicians to run the country, perhaps? Yes, I do. This is all about Brexit. 
it all goes back to Brexit. And that is why we're in this situation, because Brexit has resulted in lots of things, but many of them are arguable. OK, but one that is not arguable is that he has effectively weeded out all the talent from the front bench of the Conservative Party. Right? Because surprise, surprise, all the smart people, the people who actually, you know, kind of were honest and you know their stuff were Remainers. The only people, the only people that were Brexiters were either idiots or people who were prepared to compromise what they really thought in order to advance their own career. Boris Johnson and Liz Truss being two examples. Neither Boris Johnson nor Liz Truss really were ever Brexiters. They they really were Remain. Certainly Liz Truss was because she voted Remain. So if all you've got to choose from are either people that really think Brexit is a good thing or people that are prepared to say it's a good thing in order to advance their own careers, then you clearly got the bottom of the barrel. And that's why we have the bottom of the barrel. Lots of people with um, any principle. We'll come back to Brexit in a moment because it relates to obviously the economics and the, the growth plan that Liz Truss and Kwesi Kwarteng are advocating. But I'd just like to yeah. pursue the, the comms side of things for a little bit longer, if I may. And, and the other side yeah. of that comms equation, which is the British media, right? A lot of which was very supportive of Liz Truss during the Conservative leadership yeah. campaign. Um, during which, you know, you, you, you can't falter. She was very explicit. She said what she was going to do. She's done it. Yeah. And there have been dire consequences, you know, not only that, but there are actually a raft of warnings that these consequences would follow. Rishi Sunak, her challenger was one, but elsewhere in the media. Yeah. And they were ignored by, well, the Daily Mail is probably the most obvious example, perhaps also the Telegraph and others. Um, why, do you, mm. why, do you think, why do you think that was? There are, two there are two constituencies, if you like, two groups of people who are responsible for Liz Truss being elected. The main ones are the members of the Conservative Party. And many of them just basically are people that really don't know what they're talking about. I mean, they tend to be an older demographic. They don't, they're reading very few papers. They're watching very few broadcasts. They don't know, they didn't know. So they can be forgiven. They can be forgiven. They're, 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 you know, probably mostly male, pale and stale, and just, let's forgive them, we can forgive them. Although they have, they are responsible for what has happened, but let's forgive them. The other constituency is the media, or, or a big chunk of the UK media. And I know many editors and commentators and, and, and leader writers who know, knew full well that this wouldn't work, but they still backed her. Why did they back her? Well. That it's, it's because they thought she would win. Because they, well, no, no, because they knew she would win, right? You didn't want to back a loser. I think as soon as the leadership of the, as soon as it became clear that the, uh, that the, that the Conservative Party was going to elect Liz Truss, then those papers backed Liz Truss because there was no point backing Rishi Sunak. It wasn't so much a policy difference, it was we well, don't want to back a loser. So, but they could have done, they could have fought for Rishi. They could have fought against the economic idiocy of Liz Truss, but they just couldn't be bothered. Uh, and now they're, you know, I mean, one of the problems that we've got with the current generation of political journalists, and not all of them, but many of them have no business or economic understanding at all, right? There's a big difference between political journalists and business journalists. And some of the best ones have done both sides in the UK. So you know, uh, Rob Peston, obviously, ITV, Laura Koonsberg at BBC. Uh, I mean, there are um, many, many others, particularly in broadcast, actually. Um, Evan Davis. I mean, you know, there are a lot, a lot of people, they absolutely understand both sides. Most of the print journalists in the UK now are very young. They are politically invested. Most of them are Tories. They're, they live in Spadland. All their mates are Spads. They, some of them have been spad, some of them have been, you know, there are people that cross over from Downing Street to newspapers and go back again. It's extraordinary. They have no understanding of economics whatsoever. And I, you know, I was a business editor and, uh, for, and for many years on both sides of the Atlantic. Uh, and I, I look at some of the political journalism and I, I just despair. They don't, they don't know what the bond market is. 
They don't understand the currency markets. They simply don't understand. So therefore, they, they've been unable to hold the governing party to account because they don't understand it themselves. And you can see that if you watch, um, well, you can see that in some, say the Daily Mail. There are, the Daily Mail has some very good business journalists, actually. Uh, Alex Brummer, who's the business uh, supremo there, and Ruth Sunderland, who's the business editor, uh, they both, they're, 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 if you look at what they've been saying, they've been very different from what the upfront paper's been saying. So if you, if you know how to read the papers, you can see some common sense, but it's sort of hidden away a little bit, unfortunately. You mentioned, um, you know, leader writers, editors, journalists that you know, and their play in backing Liz because they knew she was going to win. Um, I'm not asked, yeah. I obviously wouldn't ask you to name names or anything like that, but sort of on a, on a personal level, how do those people feel about it? Are they just are they quite cynical? They're quite just openly cynical about the fact that they're you know being tactical and being strategic. Is there a degree of I, I don't know um, ownership of the fact that they're backing something that perhaps they know is going to be potentially disastrous for the country? I'm just wondering about the sort of the the, the, the personal weight of that decision on that all. Well, I mean, you know, this again, I had to repeat myself, but it all goes back to Brexit. Basically, there are a whole generation now of journalists and editors who are invested in Brexit. They basically enable lies to be told about what would happen if we left the European Union. They therefore were in the game. They are bought and paid for. They are part of the problem. We've got a whole load of journalists working in the newspaper business in this country now who are part of the problem because they were there when this happened they decided to exclude any of the negativity that the remainers uh, 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 um, wanted to bring to the to, to the debate they chose to endorse brexit and once you've done that you're then left with boris johnson who you have to endorse because he is Mr. Brexit and they did endorse him. And now, of course, he's gone. And then you're left with, with, with Liz Truss. It's too late for them to turn around now. Um, you know, there are, it, it's, it's interesting if you look at the papers, there are people within the Telegraph and the Mail and, and, and others who, who are showing independence of thought. There are, it's not, it's not everybody is to blame. Uh, but generally, um, what we need now is uh we're in we're in you know the, the end of a cycle we're in the end we're, we are coming towards the end of, of a period and everybody will change over it has to happen there has to be uh there will be a political change that's the way the system works i'm sure labor will be elected um uh, and it will leave the the print media utterly high and dry with nowhere to go Keir Starmer may well be the first prime minister in this country to be elected with no major tabloid endorsement, apart from the mirror, obviously. He's not going to get the endorsement. I, do, I, don't, I think we've got beyond the time now where the sun is going to turn again and, uh, and say vote Labour. I don't think that will happen. It, it would, you know, the paper, the circulation is sort of so low now, it wouldn't be a huge thing, but it will be a huge thing politically. I don't think they're going to do that. The Mail clearly are not going to do that. The Express absolutely isn't, the Star isn't. <laughs> Um, and so on. So um, we are at a point now where it doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter anymore. And I think that that's the thing. They have they have shot their their bolts, so, so to speak. You know, I, I think that you know, if I was advising Keir Starmer, uh, it, it it would be there is no need to glad hand the tabloids. Don't alienate them. Alienate them. Don't be rude about them go and see them, have a cup of tea with them. Uh, but, you know, don't fly to Australia to, to go to, to Rupert Murdoch's conference, which is what Tony Blair did in Hayman Island in the late 90s. There would be no reason to do that now. Um, I think a courteous uh, and a matter of fact relationship uh, is, is all that's required um, because um, the world, they have been so wrong about so much. They are completely invested uh, in the other side and you know um, you will just demean yourself if you would try and bring them around uh, and uh, lose votes because people will be watching and there's no need to do so so I don't think you want to create enemies in, in, in so far as there, there can ever not be enemies but I, I don't think uh, uh, you know it's necessary to uh, or prudent to try and sort of do PR with them. There, there is 
that Westminster maxim, isn't there, that no political leader has won a general election without Richard Murdoch's blessing or more specifically the support of the sun. Um, you obviously don't think that's forthcoming and that perhaps he doesn't even need it. Do you, do you um, think that almost... A lot lot easier. I, I, look, I think, what, well, I think what's very likely, I mean, the, you know, it, is that the sun just doesn't particularly endorse on either side. I think that I, I, I think I don't think the sun the sun will go out of its way to endure say Liz Truss go, takes the Tories into an election. Um, I, I think I, I, they probably will endorse the Tories, but there's a difference between it'd be half-hearted, be neither here nor there. Um, uh, but I don't think they'll, they'll endorse the other side either. And if they do, that would be pretty amazing. But it wouldn't be the big thing it was when the paper endorsed Tony Blair in ninety seven. Yeah, Polit politically, it could also be quite freeing for Keir Starmer, couldn't it? In a way, to not feel like he's beholden to, uh, you know, I think that's absolutely order. right. You're absolutely right. Keir Starmer will become the first prime minister to be elected in this country without the endorsement of any tabloid. I'm pretty sure about that. So therefore, he will be free of them, and that is a good thing for democracy. Uh, and for him and for the Labour Party. I, I don't, I mean, will they give him a kicking every day? Of course, they're going to give him a kicking every day anyway. You know, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just, you know, I don't think many people understand that, yes, circulation of the tabloids has dropped in massively. But even now, if you're Liz Truss and Kwasi Kwarteng, you can rely on them to be, to watch your back relatively, right? Even now, right? If you're, if they were, if Liz Truss and Quality Grant, if they were, if if they were Labour, they would be being taken apart by the Sun, the Mail, the Telegraph, and others on an hourly basis, in a way which would influence the BBC and broadcast media by creating stories, right? So they, there would be if if Liz Truss and Quality Grant were Labour politicians, we would have had an election already they would be dead in the water they would not be able to so it's only because the tabloids support the tories and are either they're just playing a flat i mean yeah they've been critical and that you can tell them you know they're frustrated they're like oh my god you know we've got to support you for heaven's sake give us a, <laughs> that was a, you know, it's very difficult for them actually i don't suppose anybody feels sorry for them um i think it's particularly difficult over at the Times this week, because the new editor at the Times, Tony Gallagher, who is a has, has edited the Sun in the past and is extremely pro-Tory, very, very pro-conservative, pro-Brexit as well. You know, he, he, Tony's got the job and, he, and, and he's got to support this lot, and he's got a staff and a, and a, a stable economist who are not supportive of the Conservative Party. He's got a really difficult, he's got the opposite situation that I have at the Sun. You know, I was a Labour supporter, but the staff were support all Tories. He's he's the opposite at the Times, and he's got some really big names like David Aranovich and others, uh, really big monster columnists there, and they he can't afford for them to walk out. Right, they, they, that would be a disaster. So he's he's got you know he's got a very difficult job there. Don't envy him that at all. But it it it's it's tough. It, it it's it tough times now. If you're a Tory editor, it really is because you've got nowhere to go. You can't, you can't bat Labour. It's too late. So, you know, uh, it, it, it's 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 interesting. I mean, it, it, it's it's a, it's it's un, it is. Un, I know people always say it's unprecedented, but this re, this really is unprecedented. By well, um extension of of your logic there, that you know if. Trust and Quateng were Labour politicians, they'd be torn to pieces by the papers and there'd be an election by now. The, you know, the conclusion of that is that it is within uh, Rupert Murdoch, Lord Rothermere, the other proprietors, it's within their gift to sort of, to end this, right? And to bring it, to bring it all down. So I, I, I yeah, wondered, no, yeah. obviously, you, you, yeah. you, you know, well, you did know, I don't know if you're still in touch, Rupert. I mean, what, what do you think he makes of all this? Well, um, look, uh, the reason that either Jonathan Rothermere or Rupert Murdoch can bring this to an end is, if, is, is, is not that, you know, if either of them said today this trust is finished, that their readers would suddenly create the situ situation or flip to Labour. It's not that. It's just that they are, that the Conservative Party have allowed themselves to, to be owned by these guys. 
uh, uh, they are basically bought and paid for and have been supported uh, throughout Brexit. And again, I keep saying this, it goes right back to Brexit and they cannot survive without them now. So it would be like the emperor's new clothes. You know, if either of them said it's finished, then it would be finished. The, the effect on the, on the political world would be you know, like dynamite, right? So Jonathan, well, the male is not with the dupe. The male could do it, but they're not going to do it. They're, 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 it's a conservative thing, the male, and their readers are conservative. They can't, you know, they, they're, 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 so that's not going to happen. Uh, if Geordie Gregg had still been the editor, it might, but that's that, that boat has sailed. Rupert Murdoch's in a much more interesting situation here. He, he, all his businesses in the UK are mature businesses now. In other words, he's not growing businesses. He can afford, he doesn't care. He doesn't have to care about what people think about him here in the UK or about growing business in terms of revenue. He doesn't, you know. So uh, he, he, you know, uh, the UK is a relatively small part of, of his empire, even though it's a much smaller empire now. Um, he's never really liked the Tories, right? Going back right back to student days, he's always been very much a mixture. Uh, he doesn't like the establishment, um, so he could. He's quite capable. Uh, particularly looking at backing winners at saying right this is wrong and calling it but you know that would if you were to do that you'd have to do that against um a great amount of opposition within his own newspapers which he's done before i'm not sure he's quite got the energy to do that now uh but he's he he he, he might do um so i think i think i think Murdoch could do it i don't think the daily mail will do it but but um um you know, I mean, obviously, you know, Rupert is 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 in his nineties now. Whether whether he's quite up to the to the to to whether he cares about another British moment, I don't know. Does he? Yes, he could make he could create one of the great moments in the history of newspapers in this country by suddenly saying it's finished. Right, the Sun, the Times, next, and the Sunday Times all say it's over. Particularly the Sun. Great big front page, you know, go now. You know, we have had enough. We need an election. We're not necessarily saying that Labour should be elected, but this has just failed. Our readers demand proper government. That's a very defensible position for the Sun to take, and the, and the Times and the Sunday Times would follow on from that. Uh, I'm not sure he cares enough. Actually, I'm not sure he cares enough about the UK to even do that, if I'm really honest. Um, uh, but he could do. I, I just have one final thing to say about Brexit, I guess, and it's that, you know, this whole chat has been kicked off by Liz Truss's budget, mini budget, fiscal event, the growth plan, whatever you want to yeah. call it. And, you know, no one seems prepared to say or even reference in passing the fact that leaving the EU is forecast to reduce our GDP by 4%. And the Chancellor's going around saying he's hoping for about 2% growth in GDP. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, there's one way he could double that isn't there but it's just there's like an well, omerta you know, around the whole thing there is an omerta so, you know we had a growth plan and the growth plan was to grow with our biggest market which is the eu you know and it is you know leaving the eu means we're not going to grow because we're going to go backwards even even if you the most positive so the most positive plan but you can't say that it's really strange you you're not allowed to say that even at the bbc you don't say that because they're so worried about being seen as being as being Remainer. But, you know, what is going to happen is this. Starmer is going to get elected and then they're going to have to look at the single market in the first term um, because that's, they'll have the same problem that the Tories have got, which is, which is how the hell are we going to grow the economy, you know, given everything else, which, which you know. So I don't think there'll be, you know, that there'll be another referendum on Brexit. I don't think the Brexit as a name will even be mentioned, certainly not by the Labour Party, have got any sense, because they need to get elected first. But once they are elected, um, then I think that we could well find our way back into the single market. And once we're in the single market, you might look in a few years' time and see there's actually not much difference where we are uh, then and where we would have been if we hadn't had the referendum. And I think that because the reality is every serious person knows in business and in economics and in central banking and anywhere that Britain has to be part of the single market in order to prosper and that's why the whole brexit thing was complete and utter scandal 
uh, David, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to speak to me. Thank I'm really you. grateful. I appreciate you're a, you're a busy man. So um, thank you very much. Um, and yeah, I wish, wish you all the best. Thank you. All right, thanks, Ollie. Thanks.